Ashley coming at you live from Boston for a little Saturday morning recording. Uh, I feel so good. We had such a chill night last night. We did. That like this is the most perfect Saturday morning activity right now. Some may say we are having an optimized weekend. We are. We really are. If you have not already go back and listen to I think it's episode 50 how to optimize your weekend and we broke down the perfect recipe for a balanced weekend and Courtney and I realized last night wait we're actually living our optimized weekend yes so Thursday we had a little early Galentine's Day celebration guys we went to Brave Daughters in Seaport which is a permanent jewelry store you guys have definitely seen it online. yeah I think they had like a an activation in Seaport in the little houses for yep. a while and now they're right across from Le Labo and it was so fun we got matching gold bangles 14 yes. karat gold plated and they're it, like so simple dainty yeah and they're just a nice additive piece yeah and they're the type of piece that can be permanent. I mean, like, so their bangles are new, but before that they had the chains. Don't mm-hmm. you also have one of those? I have a chain as well, yeah. Same vibe, like super dainty, simple, a nice touch. Yeah, and I, so they're on you forever. You can't take them off, like that is the point. And if they were to break, I overheard the sales rep sharing that you just bring it back and they'll like zap it back on you for free. Amazing. So as long as you don't lose it, but it's so freaking cute and I think it's such a good idea to go with a best friend or with a partner Ash and I were joking as we were going in there because we have said for years that we're gonna get like matching or complimentary tattoos Mm -hmm. and we have yet to do that so this is that for us it's literally a permanent friendship bracelet (laughs) yeah I'm obsessed although I do still want to get tattoos I know me too maybe the Alps no We have to do research first, but that would kind of be spontaneous and fun. Yeah, that could be fun. Yeah. I'm not opposed. So we did that Thursday, and then we went to Nautilus afterwards. Yeah, so that was my first time at Nautilus. Yes. That was a vibe. I loved it. For sure, a Boston wreck of the week. Definitely. There we go. Brave Daughters, and then Nautilus, two Boston wrecks of the week. Ooh, look at us go, exploring Boston, having things to share. It's been quite some time. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) seriously uh we had a check that ended in 222 dollars we got no free, the vibes were right we got free wine from the bartender because we just had <sighs> such good energy guys something about sitting at the bar like just walking in to sit at the bar mm-hmm. and have a time yep it's there's really nothing better bar seating equals long conversation for four hours and just like having the best time and like taking your time with your meal letting the drinks flow we ran into one of our friends also with his girlfriend like literally sitting two seats down from us (laughs) yeah it was a good time it was a great time and then friday ashley and i's new routine is to work from home together and it's amazing yeah because we typically always have some like admin stuff to do for you can do both and in an ideal world, we record on a Friday morning. We work together at lunch break. We do a little work and then we get to hang out like kind of all day. And so we did that yesterday. Yep. And then solid core at yep. 5 p.m. We went to a solid core class at the end of the week. Thanks to Hannah. You yes. can do both listener who's an unreal solid core instructor. Yeah, it was so good. Court and I were just saying how sore we are. Yeah. Like I have little muscles in my abs and my butt and incredible. Yeah. I've been wanting to try a solid core bracket, solid core yeah. and bracket class for so long. That's all we've been saying. We can't say the name solid core without saying, wait, bracket, solid yeah. core bracket. <laughs> I think it's so it's, fun. Yeah. I wonder what the purpose of that is. I don't know. There's got to be a story behind it. After the workout class, what did you do? Joe and I watched a movie. What'd you watch? Ferris, Ferris Bueller's, Bueller's. Wait, Day Off. So good. Yeah. No, I'm obsessed. I'm I ended so up falling happy asleep, you loved it. <laughs> but I'm going to watch the second half of it this afternoon. Um, it was so good. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a while, but it's a classic. Oh my god, I love it. Ferris is my guy. I have a little crush on him. That's I think he's so, so funny. cool. Wait, so Ashley was saying last night that she had never seen that movie before. Yeah. 
And it got me thinking because I associate Ferris Bueller's Day Off with The Breakfast Club. Have you seen The Breakfast Club? Yes, I have. Okay. I was going to say, if you haven't, you should watch that next if you like Ferris Bueller. Because I don't know, it kind of gives the same energy to me. But yeah, love it. And then I watched The Reacher, which Ashley had recommended a while ago. Um, But Matt and I started it at... I don't know, nine o'clock last night. And I think we watched at least five episodes. We didn't go to bed till like one thirty in the morning. Two? Whatever the first season was. Oh, you're just on the first season. Yeah. I, I started it last night. I feel like you're watching the second season though. Cause you said the shower scene. No. Oh, well, I don't know. It's just kind of playing and playing and playing. I don't know how far along I am, but we started first episode that was available on Hulu or whatever. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Season two is even better. Oh my God. I'm so, yeah. I'm like literally like so scared when I'm watching it. I'm such a baby when it comes to stuff like that. It's not that scary. No, it's one. so <laughs> scary. I'm like, I just like, if Matt says boo and like, we're the only two people in the house, like I freak out. Yeah. I hate that I'm that way, but it's my truth. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, I don't know. It's just so fun. It's got a hot main character. Mm-hmm. It's got like He's sex perfect. and love. He's probably it has like, action and drama and uh, mystery and thrill. I'm into it. Yeah. And it has a little bit of cheesiness, which I like. Yeah, of course. We love a little bit of cheese. Yeah. Oh, uh, I dream about him. <gasps> I had a dream about him last night too. <laughs> no, like actually uh, I woke up, I turned to Matt. I said, so did, cause I was saying that before we went to bed that I was going to have nightmares because yeah. it was just too much in one sitting. Courtney, it's not that scary. No, but like it's scary to I'm me. I'm also a baby, but like, wow. Yeah, no, I'm like extra baby. I'm infant. <laughs> and <laughs> and so I woke up in the morning. I was like, did you have like any dreams about Reacher? He's like, no. Did you? I was like, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't nightmares so. <laughs> though. I'm done. I know. Anyhow, now we're here. And now we're here. Do you want to say what we're doing for the rest of the weekend or will we catch that up on another time? No, let's just talk about it now. Okay. So then after this recording session, we have a very exciting appointment. Ah. That is so (laughs) girls in their 20s. You guys, we're going engagement ring shopping. Ah. How fun. I'm actually so excited. And I'm excited to like see you for the first time. Like, I don't know. I feel like it's I've gone a few times for background. I've gone to like a few diamond shops. The first one I went <laughs> to was probably over the summer. I was just like bored, was really was really surfing Pinterest and Instagram. And I started to think about the type of ring that I wanted. And I stumbled across a jeweler on a day where I had nothing to do. Um, and I didn't love anything. And then I went with Matt actually when we were in Florida, it was like a rainy day. We were walking by a place. I was like, I said it as a joke and he like didn't fight it. So immediately I was like, oh, then we're definitely going in. Mm -hmm. And I, the world of diamond and natural and lab and and, like, there's so much that you don't realize goes into it. And it's just so fascinating. Yeah, it really is. So I'm excited to go with you. That's like such a fun girly activity. Yeah, a I'm little so bestie excited. activity. I'm and the goal here is just figure out what I what we both personally like. Yeah. Because I feel like there's so much on social media, and I don't. I just have no idea. I've never been. I've never had a gravitational pull to a certain type of look and feel, and so I'd like to discover that today. Yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah, me and too. And we're gonna try to vlog. I don't know if that's allowed in there. Yeah. But also, yeah, I don't know if I've mentioned, like, we're fully vlogging this entire weekend because Courtney and I are spending every second together. So if you're interested in any of these details, head over to the YouTube. Yeah. Also, have we ever nice addressed talk. that we're officially on YouTube? So if you're listening and you want to watch and maybe you don't have Spotify, we fully upload audio only and our video podcasts on YouTube. Yeah. So feel free to check us out and subscribe over there. Yeah. And Ash sprinkles in some vlogs that are so amazing. And so... We're uh, working on it. Yeah. 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 But it just adds a little oomph, you know? A little oomph. A little something I, special. I feel like our YouTube channel can fill in the blanks between episodes and yeah. between topics. Yeah. So I think it's fun to have both. Because you can do both. You can do both. You can always do both. <laughs> And then after the ring shop today, where what are we doing? Well, then we're, we're having separate days. Yep. 
I'm going out to dinner tonight to celebrate Valentine's Day with Matt. We're going to Uni. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited for your review. Yeah, I'm very excited. I was craving sushi last night and I was like, wait, no, I can't do that two nights in a row. But yeah, we're celebrating Valentine's Day early. I'm going to wear my fur coat. I'm very excited. <gasps> oh, I'm so excited. We haven't talked about the fur coat yet, actually. Oh my God, guys, there's so much to catch you up on. It's because we've been spending so much time I know. together. <laughs> so there's just so many items. So Courtney and I, actually last weekend we were recording. Mm-hmm. And then Courtney was like, all right, like I have so many items to like. So many errands. So many errands chores. To and I was like, okay, me too. Like I have to buy a fur coat today. Like that is my number one errand for our Alps trip. It didn't take much convincing, but I said, Courtney, like how fun would it be if you just like didn't do your errands and like we went together and she's like, okay. <laughs> I thought I was really going to hold strong because I didn't have as much of a desire to buy a fur coat as you did. Yeah. No, you know what was the deciding factor? In my mind, I wanted to go to Liv's. And you said as we were walking out the door, I think I want to go to Liv's. And and in my head, I was like, oh, maybe we could just like meet each other there. And I'm like, what the fuck point is that? Let's just go. That's like halfway halfway to the fur shop. Let's just (laughs) go together. And... Oh my God. It was so much fun. It was so fun. So I forgot about Liv. So we went and we picked up like our little juices at Liv's juice bar in Medford. If you haven't been so good. Yeah. They have these little like protein balls too. Amazing. Another, we're giving you guys all the recs. And then we drove 25 minutes North up to Peabody and it's called Glamour Furs. Mm -hmm. You can't take photos in there. It... (laughs) You walk in and it is a fur winter wonderland. Yeah. Like, coats on coats on coats on coats. Like fur. thousands. Oh my God. Thousands of coats. And then there's like a back room and I had called earlier saying, hey, like here's my budget. I'm, I don't want to drive all the way up there if you don't, if you don't have in this budget. And they're like, oh yeah, we have like a ton of pre-owned stuff. Like you'll be fine. You probably have like 30 coats to sift through. It was so much more. Yeah. It was thousands. Coats. So we went through, we were trying them on. We were the only ones in the store and it was we a, both ended up getting fur coats. It was a vibe and a half. It was so much fun. And I, I don't know. It was like, I didn't know what to expect, but I definitely wasn't expecting as many. I also wasn't expecting the like bargaining that goes down. Yeah. Cause you have to think like there cannot be that much of a demand for all of those coats. And we would be like, is this in our price range? And they'd be like, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> yeah. I kept being like, okay, before I fall in love with this one, like, is it in my budget? And they were like, just try on the ones you like. And then we'll yeah. go from there. Yeah. So I did end up spending like twice my budget, <laughs> but Hey, that's okay. Such is life. I mean, is that a word? Is that a phrase? Such is life. I've been saying is. that a lot. It is. It's, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I love our coats and they complement each other so well. Yeah. I mean, I naturally. Think I like <laughs> yours better than mine, though. No. I've been looking at my photos and I'm like, I think I went a little too much. But I swear, like, it was the first off, it was the first one that you tried on yeah. in the store. And this, I can you put it on? I, I was like, you do not need to look further. Like, it yeah. looks like you're a bit more extra of a human being yeah and like it is a bit more extra but it's not too extra I don't think I'd look at it and be like whoa like what the who is that girl but you know what we have to do what (laughs) we have to walk through Boston Logan airport dripping in (laughs) as we were in the store we were trying this on we're like oh my god this is so perfect for like France and Italy and oh my gosh and then we were quite humbled and we also realized that we had to walk through Boston Logan airport (laughs) walk around that extra in our home city (laughs) no it's gonna be so funny and we are going to be so out of place oh I know I know meanwhile Matt and Joe are like you're kidding me oh my god Matt still hasn't seen me to wear it he's gonna love it once it's on but he's like I'm gonna have to carry that thing around it's heavy they are heavy yeah it's no joke it's really no joke Anyway, it was quite a Saturday last Saturday. It we was. had so much fun. Like I would do it all again just for the 100%. experience, yes. for the gir- for the girly little day that we had. Yeah, it was perfect. Uh huh. Okay, think should we like get into the episode? Yeah. Maybe? I, I don't know. Are you guys still here? <laughs> I think that's everything. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Today's episode seventy four. 
Oh, 74. Guys, we're almost at the end. We're almost at the season finale. Yes. So this is the second to last episode of season three. But in thinking of today's episode, Ash and I were going back and forth on what should we talk about? Because I don't know why there's like some sort of pressure around, oh my God, like we got to leave off on a good note. Like this is a great... I don't know. Like, it's just an episode that's going to be floating around for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we had, like, four different ideas for this episode. And we really talked through all four ideas. Like, we have outlined four Four. (laughs) We have. But we ultimately landed on... Pros and cons of living with a significant other. Yeah, which is so fun. I love all things relationship talk. We're both, like, I think can speak to this topic. Because it's been a while. Yeah. We have lived with our significant others for enough time now to know, like, what are the amazing parts? What are some things that you need to work through? But for people that have not lived with a partner before, I feel like you have all of these, like, rambling questions. Like, what is it going to be like? Is this the right decision? When is the right time? So let's chat through some of that today. Yeah. Also, I think the concept of moving in with your significant other feels like such a big step. And when you're in your 20s from like as soon as you graduate college to the end of your 20s, people are at all different stages. Like some people move in together because they met in college, like right after school. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, like that seems crazy. Other people have been together for all four years of college and still decide like not to live with each other for four or five years. Yeah. It's crazy. And everybody's on their own journey. Mm -hmm. Other people will meet post school and move in right away. Yeah. Like every one thing to keep in mind is like, don't look at what everybody else is doing and don't feel like pressure. Yeah. Pressure to move in. Yeah. Or even if you're single right now and be like, oh my God, all my friends are moving in. Like they have their significant other, like everybody's on their own journey. Yeah, totally. And it's so different for everybody. Totally. It's like, I have friends that have known their partner for three months and move in and I have friends that have been dating for literally seven to eight years and still don't plan to move in with each other for another two years it's dependent on your lifestyle your situation like what you care about like what your financial situation is like literally so many things Mm -hmm. but should we start with kind of our journey and like when we decided to move in with our significant others yeah you want to go first Because you did it first. Okay, I'll go first. So Joe and I were together for coming up on two years. And it kind of made sense because our leases were coming to an end. It was going to line up nicely. And we were like, okay, like we probably should. We basically live together now. Like we spent four to five nights every single week together. Mm -hmm. And he had his own place. Yeah. um, And I was there all the time. Yep. And then anytime I wasn't there, he was at my place. Like yep. We spent, we basically lived together. So we're like, okay, like it probably makes sense because why would we each pay? If I didn't move in with him, I would have gotten a place on my own. Yep. Why would we each pay for our own individual spaces Yeah. when we literally spend every second together? Like that's just not financially responsible. No. My family was like, do not move in together. Absolutely not. It's too soon. Ashley, I'm advising you against this. I remember that. There is no worse feeling than your family saying something like that. Like not having your back. Like not being on your side. But they're just being protective and they never know. And even Joe and I were like, should we do this? Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. We were both hesitant. It was not a hell yes on both of our sides. But the best thing about Joe and I is our communication is off the charts. Mm -hmm. So I was so comfortable looking at him and being like, I don't know. Like, what if this is a bad idea? Like, I don't know if I fully want to live with you. Yeah. And he was like, honestly saying like, is it the right choice or is it not? And we were both like, I don't know what the right choice is because at the end of the day, you can't tell the future. And our philosophy was, okay, let's move in together. If shit hits the fan, perfect. We found out sooner than later, we can't live together and we're not right for each other. Yeah. Or if we move in together, everything's great. And we're like, okay, perfect. I don't know which way it's going to go, but we promised each other that like, this was just, we're going to attempt it and we're okay with any outcome. Just because we move in together does not mean we have to get married. Yeah. Does not mean this is like a... Yes, it's a commitment, but we agreed this was not going to be a commitment for us. Yep. It was just, hey, let's see if it works and we'll go from there. Yeah. Because I think 
the pressure of when you move in with someone is like, oh my God, if you move in together, like you're basically married. Yep. And while in a way it's like on that path, we took that pressure off of ourselves and said, by no means does this mean we're getting married. Yeah. We're just taking the next step in our relationship. But again, we are not tied to anything. And that made him and I both like way more comfortable and it ended up being the best thing we've ever done. We're so happy. We live together like we are actually two puzzle pieces that were yeah. meant for each other. But we wouldn't have known that until we pulled the trigger. Yeah. And I I love that story too because like you do just have such an open relationship. And I feel like any anxiety that people have over making a life decision like that is cured by just being open and having an honest conversation. Yeah. And I feel like you two are amazing at that. And I love the way that you took that pressure. And you're right. Like, why is it that when people move in with each other, I even fell victim to this too. It's like, you just naturally think of like, okay, the next step. So like, that means we're getting engaged and that means we're getting married. And that means this. And like, what what is the timeline on that? And it's like, whole, like literally slow your roll. It's like, yeah. take it one step at a time. It does. One thing does not need to need to mean the other. Although yeah. ideally it will, it does not have to. So take some of that pressure off. I wanted to ask you though, just for the audience listening, what age were you? So I was 24 and he was, 27 26 okay cool I just think it's fun to know like in general but yeah it's definitely clearly worked out yeah (laughs) my story is a little bit more expedited but Matt and I met when I was about to turn 24 and I, right before we met, I had just signed a new lease with my roommates from before. Um, so I lived with my roommates for a year. And then throughout that year, Matt was living by himself. He's lived in the same apartment for the past four, almost five years He by himself. So that was like just a, it wasn't like I was dating somebody that had roommates and had to figure out like, what do I need to get a new place or like it wasn't like a strategic we're moving in together we're doing this it just kind of naturally happened that I would spend a lot of time at his apartment because he lived by himself um and then he like never slept at your place right he slept at my place twice because why we lived within walking distance from one another and then we could either sleep at my place and like tiptoe around like my roommates and share a bathroom and with all their other boyfriends there and although like it was fun like when we did do that we could share those experiences with them and then just walk down the street and sleep in a private place but yeah that's an interesting call out (laughs) kind of (laughs) wild (laughs) he was rarely at my place um and so yeah it just kind of it felt like I lived there because similar to you very immediately I was spending so much time there I had a set of my own keys to his place because it just like made sense for us and then by the time my lease was up a year later we looked for new places to live together but ultimately we just decided to stay in his current place and make it ours and yeah we've only we had only known each other for a year beforehand we didn't have as much stress around it because I feel like I wasn't putting a security down for a new place yeah. and I, we weren't like going through this together. Like my name's not even on his lease. Like I just, yeah. it felt like nothing really changed aside from my life got a lot easier because all of my stuff was at his place and yeah. I wasn't trucking back and forth between one place and another. Uh, but yeah, clearly it's going amazing. I feel like my life is just so much calmer now because I do feel like when you're at a point where you're living with roommates and you have your own situation, but you know that you're going to move in with your significant other, you're just constantly in flux. Yeah. Um, and that caused like a lot of stress on me because I had a lot of stuff going on in my life at the time. Fast, but also like not that fast. No. Like you guys still were together for over a year before yeah. you even moved in. Yeah. Which in the grand scheme of things doesn't seem like a lot but now that we're older and like I can recognize the maturity of like 
adults I'm not looking at it through a lens of college and saying oh my god you've only been together for a year it's like yeah but it's a year of an adult mature relationship yeah which I didn't know before Joe I didn't know before like you and Matt like yeah all I knew before was these little flings and I don't think any one of my boyfriends I ever actually saw myself with Mm -hmm. it was just a fun thing at the time yeah so a a year in a relationship like that versus a year in a relationship like we have are so different yeah it not even comparable Yeah. yeah yeah and I'm when you were talking about your parents I was trying to think about mine I don't even think we had a conversation about me moving in with Matt like it was just a natural known accepted thing probably because they knew how much time I was spending at Matt's already and like Matt is a bit older that it just seemed like a natural yeah. next step but yeah family approved Carlton family approved Love it. <laughs> should we start out with pros or should we start out with cons so I kind of want to leave the cons for the end because I think they're gonna be funnier okay but I did like our perspective on well we should probably leave off on a good, good note. note yeah No, let's start with cons because you guys are probably just wanting to hear the cons. If I were to click on an episode like this, I actually don't care about anything we just talked about. And I'm like, give me the tea. I know. What are the cons? But I also think that in saying like a pro, it like there's a flip side con to it. Like every time or and vice versa. Let's just jump right in. Okay. Okay. What's your con number one then? Con number one, having the same bedtime. One thing about Joe and I is we will be going to bed at the same time. Yeah. I heard somewhere one time that healthy couples and happy couples go to bed at the same time. And so therefore, Joe will always come to bed with me. (laughs) When I'm ready for bed at 9 p.m. and he's out here like playing his video games or watching the freaking Godfather, which he's been doing recently, a three and a half hour like movie. He's like, no, 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 like you go, you go. Like, I'm not ready yet. I'm like, I don't think so. Yeah. You are coming to bed with me. And then vice versa, for whatever reason, whenever we're like watching a TV show and it finishes and like we want to, I always want to watch another one. And he's like, no, and just shuts the TV off. And I'm like, why do you get to make the decision when we go to bed? I think it should be a shared experience. Yeah. So that's like a big con and you don't really think about that. When you live on your own or when you live with roommates, you can piece out of the living room like whenever you want. Seriously. But you kind of do have to think about if I have energy and he's exhausted, I can't be in the room like with the lights on. Yeah. No. I can't be playing sound on my phone. No. Like you kind of really do have to coordinate. You have to sync up your lives, your schedules. Cycle (laughs) syncing. No, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, that got me thinking of my con, which is he always chooses the movie or TV show that we're watching. Mm -hmm. And like our taste in that just could not be more different. Granted, I don't really watch TV or movies. So like in the beginning, I don't really have a preference of what we're watching. But now that I've experienced his awful taste so much, I like, I'm like, no, like how do we pick something that we will both enjoy? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because otherwise, I'm going to be stuck watching, like, Percy Jackson, the series on Disney+. And I'm like... I feel like I would love that. No, but I'm like, (laughs) Matt, I'm like, this show is terrible. And he's like, I I know, but he's the type of person where if he starts something, he needs to finish it. Mm -hmm. It's like a part of, like, his ADHD. I don't know. That's with everything that he does in life. So if he watches, I'm like, you don't... If you end up that you... If you end up realizing you don't like a first episode of a show that you're watching, you're not obligated to watch the whole thing. He goes, but I am. And I'm like, no. So that sucks because every time I want to watch TV, which is rarely, I have to watch something that I don't care to be watching. Yeah. See, I feel like you got to put your foot down. Like Joe. Well, well, we watched The Reacher last night. So that was good. There you go. But but we had to finish the season finale of Percy Jackson first. Right. See, like (laughs) I would love to watch Percy Jackson and Joe would say, absolutely not. I'm never putting that on the the TV. And like I said before, he He has control of the TV. I know. Me too. Like I wanted to watch The Bachelor last night. He makes me watch all these stupid little ninja warrior shits, anime, whatever. Mm -hmm. And... I want to watch The Bachelor and he's like never in a million years. Yeah. It's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Next con has to do with my first con. The same way you have to go to bed at the same time. It is 
almost impossible. So I'm an early riser and I want to be an early riser. Yeah. I want to wake up at 6 a.m. or earlier every single day. Mm-hmm. Joe works from home, does not have morning meetings. He's like, Ashley, there's no reason I need to be up. So when my 6 a.m. alarm goes off and I have this warm body next to me that I just want to cuddle, what am I going to ch- What am I gonna do? Am I going to get up or am I just going to be sucked back into bed? And more times than not, I'm sucked into bed. Yeah. And it's hurting my productivity. So I do blame that on Joe. Because <laughs> I know for a fact, if I was living alone, I'd be up and at him. I know. I would have nobody. He drags me down sometimes. Yep. And that's, yeah. <sighs> I don't know how people do it where thankfully he likes to get up early on the weekends. Mm-hmm. He's just not a 6 a.m. every single day because he's like, why do I need to do that? Yeah. I could never live with somebody who like sleeps, sleeps until still. noon on yeah. a Saturday. Yeah. That's such a good point. I feel like lifestyle is like so important. And like those are things that you can pick up on before you decide to move in with somebody. I was giving this example or I was thinking about it in the car on the way over in the past I've dated men that like they didn't look unhealthy but they were unhealthy Mm -hmm. like they their go-to food would be like fried food or always takeout and like sleeping late and like drinking a bunch of drinking like every single night after work just because and that could not be farther from me. Yeah. But I think when you don't live with someone, it's easy to like overlook those things because it doesn't necessarily impact your everyday life. Yes. Whereas you move in and you're not willing to compromise your lifestyle and they're not willing to kind of budge and become a bit healthier. Eventually, you kind of end up with the same lifestyle and mesh together. So either you compromise and end up like losing a little bit of yourself in the process and you're not be living your best self or you have like this animosity towards the person for not wanting to better their lives the way you want to better yours. Totally. So, yeah, just things to think about because I think there's ways for you to have you could pick up on little flags as to whether or not it would make sense for you guys to live together. And if Joe were somebody who slept till noon on the weekends, like that would never work for you. Next con for me, lack of leftovers and snacks in the house. So you know how I told you that Matt likes to finish things when he starts them. Mm -hmm. I will go to the grocery store and I will buy intentionally like things for us to share for the week but I'll buy, for example, a thing of multi-grain crackers from Trader Joe's on a Sunday. And I have it in my mind that perfect. That's going to be my my 3 p.m. snack with my yep. little Swiss cheese every single day this week when I'm working from home. And all of a sudden, I will, on Tuesday, go into the cupboard and my crackers are not there. And that is, honestly, sometimes worthy of a breakup. <laughs> I'm like, at the bare minimum, tell me that you finished it. Yeah. So that I know that in my lunch break, I I know that I'm not going to find it. Or I go and I pick some more up. Or at the beginning of the week, I'm going to buy two boxes instead. Yeah. So that you have your own and I have mine. That happened last night. I never crave sweets. Joe has like a sweet tooth. A crazy sweet tooth. He, I saw him buy like these little ice cream popsicles that are like covered in chocolate yeah and I was in the shop the shower last night and I started thinking about it and I was like oh my god for the first time in so long like that sounds so good right now yeah he just went grocery shopping like three days ago so I was like perfect I'm gonna have one of those so I get out of the shower I'm like Joe you know what sounds so good right now I'm expecting him to be like so hyped so I tell him and he's like oh I finished those he finished the entire box I'm like what is wrong with you? How? You just bought it. How did you go through every single one of the chocolate popsicles? It makes zero sense, but it is really frustrating. Very, very. And it's just, it's not even the the finishing of the item, although that is a huge piece of it. It's also, tell me that you finished it. Totally. Tell me that you finished it so that I don't have this fantasy when I'm in the shower about eating it and it not being there. Yes. Or put it on a shared, we don't have a shared note. That's our issue. We don't have a shared mm. note where we we have a shared grocery list. Yeah, we don't have a shared note where if we run out of something, we write it. We both can see it. And I've known that for a while. I just I need to act on that. Maybe I'll do that today. Yeah. OK, the next one is I know you guys are going to be shocked when I say it, but never having alone time. 
And while you guys know this about me, like I don't love my alone time. Everybody needs a little bit of alone time. And Joe works from home permanently. He gets a ton of alone time. I'm in the office three days a week. And I'm cons- I have a social life, so I'm, like, out and about and doing things. He is a homebody. Yeah. And he works from home. And he gets so much oh time God. to himself. So, like I said earlier, like, he's going to New York today, and he's going to be gone for the night. Like, I never... I'm so excited for just, like, my one solo night. Mm-hmm. I want to watch Sex in the City. I want to, I don't know, do girly things that I used to be able to do all the time. And you might say, oh, well, Ashley, like, you can always go in the other room and do your thing. Well, no. Like, when Joe's here, like, I'd rather just hang out with him. Yeah. And I don't crave my me time as much. Like, I, I'm always going to prefer to be with him. But I think it is still important to, like, have those solo moments. Totally. But I'm never going to choose them unless if they're presented to me. Yeah. We're back. So we took a brief intermission, <laughs> but we are back. Um, we were going to be late to our engagement ring shopping. Yeah, we've had quite a little morning and afternoon. I think your girl found her dream diamond. We did. We found it. We- and it's gorgeous and beautiful and it's just perfect. And that's what I was going for. Yeah. I have never found one that really spoke to me. And then I put one on my finger and it was an immediate yes. feeling. Yeah. I love it. Yep. So now I'm going to be thinking about it for the next however many months, years, until it's on my finger. Yeah. But I'm happy that I have the clarity now. Yeah. I think it's always good to figure out what you kind of want. Yes. Good to be educated. Yeah. And that was fun for me, too, because I've never, like, I don't know anything about diamonds. Mm -hmm. So just to, like, see all the different pieces and it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot more than you think. Yeah. Where were we? I think we were talking about the cons of living with your significant other. So I guess we can just hop back in. Yeah, let's do that. Final con is, I don't even know if this is a con, but I think it's something that I learned in living with a significant other. And that is you have to be really aware of the time spent together because when you're living with someone and you're cohabitating you can fall into a pattern of just existing with each other and although that's like amazing that you have a partner to do like every little thing with sometimes you can get a little too comfortable so it's a lot more effort to like make sure that you're not just coming home from work putting the tv on cooking dinner eating going to bed and like barely talking to each other yeah so you just have to be intentional about it to make sure that you don't lose that spark or you don't get too comfortable in seeing that person every single day totally because when you live with somebody all of a sudden you blink and two months have gone by and you can't even remember the last time you guys went to dinner yep because when you don't live together it's oh hey like let's make a reservation to try out this new restaurant because you have to plan how to spend your time together. Exactly. And when you live together, it's so easy to not put in that effort. Yeah. And I think you can think to yourself and be like, oh, yeah, we like had a date the other night. Or like we we got Chipotle together and we did that. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? But how often are you like, wait, when was the last time I got dressed up to go to like a dinner and like romanticize and like have our phones away And things like that. So you just need to be a lot more aware than you would need to be if you were living separately. Yes. Perfect. I think that on it, we don't have that many cons. Originally, I thought we were going to have more cons Mm because when we started to put together this list, we only had cons. Yeah. Because it's so much more fun to nitpick the small stuff. But I think that covers it. Yeah. So we can move into pros. Yep. I love that our pros are double the size of a con. Well, there should be if we are living with our significant other. (laughs) That's true. Okay, number one. You obviously can afford a nicer apartment when you have two people paying for it. And maybe this probably changes a bit when it's like a two bed. Mm -hmm. But the fact that Joe and I share a one bed, one and a half bath, I would never be able to afford this on my own. Correct. And obviously you can't have a roommate and afford this either because you're not going to share a bed with your roommate yeah so 
it's just it's so nice yeah. i live in much i live in luxury yes by having a partner and similar to that next pro is shared living expenses so yeah. going to the grocery store and splitting it evenly or picking up all of the paper towels and toilet paper and things one no, month but then, why is that so expensive no but yeah i ordered paper towels on amazon and it was like 25 dollars. yeah it's so expensive yeah but it's like you only have to do it one time and then he does it the next time and yeah. it just it's the little things that truly add up and i feel like you genuinely save money no i actually think you do and then on the grocery front it is so difficult to cook just for yourself. Yes, you have leftovers, but I don't know. Not everything is great as leftovers. And it's so much easier to buy food and cook for multiple people. Yes. And then you get more variety of meals. Like, it's just better. It's yeah. just so, so much better. And on the kitchen topic, the splitting of responsibility in the kitchen. Yes, or just chores around the house in general. Yeah. But I think to myself, on a night where I'm super busy, Matt will cook dinner and then I'll clean up and vice versa. Like the roles are always reversed. And even when we're cooking, I love moments when we're cooking together and like he'll always take care of the meat because I think that's forking disgusting and I will take care of the veggies. And it's just, it saves you time, energy, and it adds an element of fun to a mundane task totally I love what you said about living with your significant other they touch the meat in the kitchen (laughs) because that is so important to me me too and I don't know if I would be the chef I am today (laughs) if you (laughs) if I had to always touch the meat I couldn't agree more and also I just want to echo what you said so true when you have a really busy day, it's so nice to be able to lean on a partner and be like, hey, you have to do the, di- you're doing the cooking tonight. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Like that has, that we just, specifically, we strategically plan for one of those nights a week. Mm-hmm. And I, I really don't know what I would do without it. Yeah. I would have to order food. Yeah. It, it just takes the load off. And even if I have a bunch of things that I'm doing and like, I don't have time to make the bed in the morning. Like Mm -hmm. Matt will make the bed and I feel like I have a clean organized space when like if he didn't do that, it would be in shambles all day, you know? Yeah. Just having someone to pick up where you cannot pick up for yourself. Yeah, have someone just take care of you. Yeah, it's fucking nice, guys. It's fucking nice. Our men are so patient. They're so good. They really are. Yeah, what else do I have on here? Someone who fills up your water. I would like to still state, I have never filled up the Brita. Oh, I'm so jealous. Like, that is Joe's duty, and he he loves it. So I fill up the Brita. Matt doesn't drink out of the Brita. He's happily drinking tap water, which is, yeah. He's a simple man. But living off. Yeah. Living off the land. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> but I fill up the Brita and then he is the one who transports the Brita into the fridge because it's like too heavy. <laughs> okay, miss. I love going the, to the gym so I can lift my suitcase over <laughs> with ease. Can't move the Brita? No, no. Let me, let me specify. Let me give some more clarity. Do you know what our fridge is like? Yeah. We have a fridge that's not modern. On the top, it's the freezer. At the bottom, it's the fridge. And we can't open the fridge door all the way because we have a garbage can because there's no other place for the garbage can. So I can only open the fridge 60% of the way through. Okay. And then I'm squeezing. I'm... I'm holding this heavy thing that's low-key overflowing with water because it hasn't all filtered down yet. I Because I don't have a top on my Brita. I don't, we have different Brita's. Anyway, so it's not only is it heavy, I need to get myself in a squat. I need to prop the door open with my elbow, and I have to squeeze the Brita in. So it's not just like, oh, it's too heavy. Mm-hmm. It's a production that I have no care to be involved with. I, that sounds like a lot. Yeah, yeah. No. For sure. Yeah. It's not just the weight because your girl mm-hmm. is so strong. 
so strong. Okay, next one. You have a permanent doorman. Yeah, this is really important to me. This yes. fits in very well with the passenger princess. Yep. He's in charge of the keys and he's in charge of the bags. Yeah. And also, like, I don't know why. I don't, I like to think it was because it was his apartment before I moved in there that I just feel like I shouldn't be the one to get my keys out. No, I think that's just a boy thing. I think they genuinely enjoy like opening up the door for like you. Like having the door. Yeah. Yeah. He, like, he wouldn't want the girl to. No, but, but like, some, no. sometimes it's just so silly, though. It's like he has, like, all of his stuff in his hand. And I just, like, have my phone and my water bottle. And I'm, like, waiting for him to, like, lock the door on the way out. And it's like I could very well do this. But he's just trained me to never have to yeah. look, find my keys out of my bag or do yeah. the things. It's just I don't know. It's his thing. And I love it. And I love that. <laughs> I love it. Next for me would be. Just the feeling of being safe. Like, I am so paranoid that someone's going to take me. That is my biggest fear in life. Like, walking down the street, walking anywhere, walking across the street to a Walgreens. Like, I'm scared, and the world is out to get me. (laughs) I have somebody that will always accompany me on that walk. I have somebody that, if somebody was breaking in to come steal me, like, I... I feel a little bit safer knowing that Joe's there. Totally. And something about being a woman and living on your own can actually be like really scary. Yeah. In the city. Like you're walking home after a night out. I mean, I still like call somebody all the time. Yeah. But I couldn't imagine like if somebody's watching you and like they see that you live alone. Like you never know. know. We live in a really scary world. And the same way I feel safe with roommates, but there's something different about having a man in the home. I agree. I agree. And another thing that I love is Matt will always like, I always check that the door is locked, but like he always makes sure that the door is locked. No, like, and the f- show to suit, that's his nighttime, like, yeah, ritual, cleanup, ritual. Make sure the lights are off, lock the door. And I'm like, ah, I'm just a little baby in bed. <laughs> like, and that should be my role. <laughs> oh, dad, are we going to get canceled for this episode? Why? No, I don't know. We're just being silly. Next is always having a chauffeur to drive you around. Like Joe has been number one chauffeur recently. Yeah. Matt too. Yep. Matt pretty much drives me here almost every time. Yep. So I don't need to worry about parking. So I don't need to pay an additional $20 for an Uber each way. Like yep. it's just so, it like brings me back to like when I couldn't drive like growing up and my yeah. mom and my dad would yeah. like take me everywhere. It's like I have a, I have like a live in not parental figure, but like I have a living chauffeur. Daddy. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> yeah, literally. I'm dead. No, but it is really nice. Like when we went to get our bracelets, like Joe dropped me off um, after dinner. I was like, Joe, we can't get an Uber. Like, will you come get us? And he's like, yes, of course. Oh, like, thank God he did that. He drove us today to the engagement ring shop being like, it's just nice because you live with another human who when they're not, when they don't have plans... Like, they'll drive you. And honestly, vice versa. Like, yeah. when Joe goes out with the guys, like, ins- if I'm not doing anything, like, I'm here for you. Like, I'll drive. So it's kind of just nice to have that partnership. While, yes, he drives the majority of the time. Yep. If he wanted to do more things, I'm down to drive him. Yeah, me too. So this is equal. Definitely. I think when you live with your significant other, you feel more inclined to have a social life that doesn't involve them. Yeah. For example, when I lived with my roommates and best friends, I would always be like, okay, when is the next time I'm seeing Matt? I need to make a plan to see Matt. I need to, and I feel like I ended up spending more time with him than I did with like the best friends that were right in front of me. Whereas now roles are reversed. It's like, I don't need to make plans to see Matt because I see, I brush my teeth with him in the morning. Yeah. I go to bed with him every single night. And that right there is the best thing in the world. Like I can make so many plans because I know I'm gonna come home and like Joe's gonna be there yeah and that gives me so much comfort yep and there's no better feeling yeah it's it's the best I feel like I've been able to become a better friend to other people because I have more like I don't need to focus all my intention on plans with him now it's now plans with other people yeah 
I love it. And then finally is you just have somebody to do everything with. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, they say, you know, choosing a partner is the most important decision of your life. But when you get to live with literally your best friend and you get to share little silly fun moments and all of your private moments become shared with them like it's just a really cool experience like nobody you've never lived that intimate intimately Mm -hmm. with anybody in your life like not even roommates like you literally sleep next to each other every single night yeah and there is just something beautiful about that connection that is built and it's kind of cheesy but it's like so beautiful and so true and I really feel like because you spend so much time together no one knows you better than they know you yeah and that's just also again comforting it's like they know exactly if they're attentive they know exactly what you need they know exactly when you need a bit more space or when you need support and I hope everyone gets to find someone like that that makes them feel that way and makes them feel understood and seen. Yeah. Oh, I love our men. Yeah. We We're found, so lucky. We found keepers for sure. No, we really did because, and I don't, I also don't want to discount people who like have lived with a significant other and it wasn't all of these pros and yeah. maybe your cons are really different. I don't know, living with somebody, like it can be a shit show. And I want, I honestly had every intention going into my, Joe and I moving in together I was kind of expecting it to not work because I just wanted to prepare myself in case that's not a good thing. (laughs) But I was I was open. You're trying to be realistic. Yeah, I was like, okay, there's like a chance we could hate each other. Um, Thankfully, we don't, and it's amazing. But if you have experienced a shitty living situation, like just know it's part of the process. And what a good story! And now you're learning like what you like versus what you don't like. Exactly. Yeah, and you kind of get some more practice. Another thing I want to say on this topic is don't rush. Yes, we just listed out all these pros. Please, for the love of God, do not rush into living with somebody. You have the rest of your life to live with somebody. One regret that I have is I never got to live on my own. I never had my own apartment. And Joe got to have his own apartment. And yes, I was there all the time. It wasn't really his But I think there is something really cool about like, oh, no, I'm the only one that actually takes care of this place. I'm the only one that pays rent. Like, this is mine. And there's some, I I feel like you grow a lot when you live alone. So, yes, it might be more expensive and maybe not as convenient. But I think if you have the opportunity to live alone in life, I think you should take it. Yeah. I Similar situation. I just... I couldn't financially afford living on my own because that's the thing about me. I have to keep going up and up and up. And if I wanted to live by myself, I would need to downgrade significantly in like every aspect of the situation. Yeah. And luckily for me, like we, Matt and I met each other, met each other at a point in my life where I have lit, I lived with roommates for years and I was just ready and really saw myself living with him. But Yeah, there's no need to rush into it. And I also think another thing that's important to recognize is how different everyone's situations are. And like, there's no right or wrong answer. I also have a friend that moved in with her significant other after three months of knowing each other. We have another friend, McKenna and JP, who moved in with each other a few weeks after knowing each other. And I think there's pros and cons to both situations waiting and not but if you feel like a circumstance is aligning and you feel like you want to try it out on an earlier side than most people the pro is you're gonna find out really soon if it's worth your time or not yeah so you either you jump into it you dive in head first and you don't like it and then you say sayonara or (laughs) If you know, you know, (laughs) or it ends up being the best thing ever, but do not rush yourself. Don't let society rush yourself. Don't let like 
someone pressure you because it's not going to work out unless you feel whole wholeheartedly that it's your time. Yeah. I feel like trust your gut. Like if your gut, well, honestly, I don't know. Joe and I's guts when we were moving in, we're like, Oh my God, this feels really big. And it was the best decision we ever made. So, but I think what, why that worked out for you is because you were both aligned with you not being totally a hundred percent. Like this is totally going to work. Yeah. I w- we definitely knew it was going to work, too, though. Like, I yeah. say that, but, like, we definitely knew. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think open communication before you move in with your significant other and play the game of life. Have fun. Yeah. If it aligns, like, take the leap of faith. If it yep. doesn't work out, you have a good story. Yep. Exactly. You'll learn more about yourself. Exactly. And with that, I think we just finished up episode 74. That doesn't sound like a real number. No, it doesn't. I don't know when we got to this. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. If you love today's episode, please share it with a friend, share it with your significant other, share it with anybody who's contemplating moving in with their significant other. Follow us. Give us five stars. We love you. Do all the things. And we will see you next episode in Chamonix and Milano. Milano. <laughs>